Hello everyone, back to tuning in to today's per video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next week, 10 days for today's per video. Day 10 will take us to 5th of March. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the external GFS and ECM ensembles. Very run around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That gets us uh, well into the uh, second half of March now. And I should get on that for you in a moment just say that first video say was 6 a.m upload and we've also released the european outlook so check out those two videos if you would like to see that please like share and subscribe on the videos and we thank you so very much everybody uh for uh for dear matt for uh gals or whatever he's gonna have a return an old favorite uh in this video a little bit later on so more about that when we get to it just to say that um with the root canal i've been saying that root canal is tomorrow and i looked at my appointment card earlier on and it turns out the root canal is going to be a week tomorrow on uh, friday on friday the third i think friday the third of march yeah so um just when i checked out my <laughs> my appointment card around so i've gone scooting off to the dentist tomorrow and uh then i wonder what i'm doing there <laughs> A uh, senior moment, another senior moment from Gav. But the upshot is, uh, we will be live streaming a Matt tomorrow. All the videos will be as normal, a uh, Matt, and it's actually going to be a week tomorrow. Uh, but uh, I'm having <laughs> in my room canal. Uh, what's he like, eh? What's he like? I don't know to you. Anyway, I'll crack. <laughs> the video too much magic water that's what it is uh right so <laughs> i'm so sorry everyone we're going to start off uh be professional now do the day job do the day job we're going to start off with the uh polar vortex status from whatever is cool and uh ssw probability is still 100 percent so uh the zone of wind, zone of wind at 10 hpa 60 degrees north today is very slight positive at plus 1.4 ms however uh further negativity of the uh, zone of wind is expected by the end of march so this is um going back currently we are very very weakly positive uh, with the uh, Zona Winged, and, you know, we're going to be hovering somewhere around uh, positive and ne negative for the next few days, but then right at the end of February into early March, we see the Zona Wing plunging away again, and so we are expecting what we're calling a double-dip reversal. Already have one reversal of uh, Zona Wings, of course, from the major sun threat wing, and uh, we're expecting another reversal of the zone of wings at 10 hpa 60 degrees north in the stratosphere over north pole by the end of february and into the beginning of march double dip reversals are relatively uncommon so uh, we should wait and see what the upshot of that could be uh now this is how the temperature is looking at uh, 30 hpa at uh, 60 uh, degrees north at day 10 from university of berlin and you can see negativity there minus 1.7 ms we are expecting uh zone wings to go into reverse not only at 10 hpa next week but also at 30 hpa next week that's closer to the troposphere and so therefore you know that uh, that tells us that this reversal of zone wings the effects of this sudden stress when we are starting to get closer to the troposphere next week and uh, that's the kind of thing we look forward to kind of hint that we might get a tropospheric response so continue to look very interesting over the stratosphere now uh, sensing temperature is updated to a uh, yesterday 22nd of february it's sitting at 6.9 which is 3.1 degrees above average as i said that's about as high as going to get and we'll start to edge down i think over the weekend and into the early part of next week right that old favorite here it is then so it's been a long long time since we've had these uh charts these are the 500 millibar high quality flow charts from the penn state university for the uh next week 10 days we've got the jeff best on the top and the ECM is, no, got the ECM on the top. I've got to remember how to do this. You know, I haven't had these since, uh, we haven't had these since 2020, I don't think. So uh, we've got the ECM WF on the top, and the GFS is on the bottom. Uh, this was pointed out to me by my good friend VK24, VK24. Uh, yesterday, he told me that the charts were back after being away 
for so very long at uh, at the pen today. So, um, yeah, here we go then. So, uh, these are the flow charts for the uh, week 10 day time frame. Uh, in red is extrapolating to uh, above average heights, which is low pressure, blue to below average heights, which is low pressure. Uh, so you see that the ECM has a large area of above average heights sitting over to the east of the country, uh, over to the north of the country, I should say, in the 10 day time frame, with below average heights in the Atlantic, uh, jet stream doing something a little bit like that, a deep trough of low pressure into the far northeast of Europe and west, uh, west of Russia, that would be uh, very, very cold, of course. Under this area of high pressure, we probably expect overnight frost, fog, that sort of thing. Won't be overly cold, we're not tapping in to a particularly cold source of air uh, up to that point. The coldness of the uh, weather is going down into the far west and northwest of Russia. Now, the GFS has that high pressure going further northward. So, uh, again, 500 mm bar high dollar growth chart for the uh, week 10 day time frame. And look how much further west, northwest was that area of high pressure is much closer to green. Still got the trough across the west of Russia and the northeast of Europe, but we are much closer to pulling in uh, properly cold air from the Arctic and from polar regions uh, with that deep low in the Atlantic, of course, and there's some low uh, across, uh, across uh, the Mediterranean southern parts of Europe. But, uh, yeah, with the, uh, with the GFS, um, it's, it's a colder solution. We're closer to uh, pulling in that cold air from the north part. Just going to take that high pressure just a little bit further northwards, even with the GFS and back this chop of low pressure a bit further westwards. But definitely out of the two today, the uh, GFS is the colder scenario. You'll be seeing more of these over the uh, next uh, few days, weeks, months, and maybe even. Uh, yes, so uh, we used to use these charts, you know, at least a couple of times a week back in the day. Um, I say I haven't had them since 2020, but they're back now, so uh, you'll see more of those in the coming uh, in the coming updates. Thank you so much to VK24 for uh, alerting me to the return of the 500 millibar high only flow charts from Penn State University. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. See red line is the 30 year average upper air temperature average for Rumford. And uh, this, this is a suggested location by VK24. By the way, if you'd like to have your local town city feature within this part of the video, then all you need to do is email us at gazwebs at gmail.com or ask us on social media channels or through the comments and uh, we're happy to feature your local uh, town or city. So at the moment, the upper air temperatures have come down to be near normal. I've been, you know, well above average through most of February, getting colder than average as we go through the weekend and into the early part of next week. That's been an upgrade on the cold from the uh, GFS ensembles when we've seen a couple of days ago. So that's typified this winter when it has got cold. You know, it has been genuinely cold. And uh, the GFS can put quite a, a drop in the upper air temperatures then. Into the beginning of March, got a slight recovery in the upper Attention going on for a few days and then perhaps a bit of a slide away the white line which is the ensemble mean uh, is underneath the first year average so although there's a lot of scatter within there got more ensemble members up here colder ensemble members down there although there's a lot of scatter there I think the trend within the GFS is probably to start turning things colder as we progress through the first week and into second week of March very dry for Romford even into the beginning of March maybe more unsettled by the uh, second week of February, although that is a long way off. It's extended range, and uh, we've just got to wait and see. But certainly, like the next 10 days, anyway, looking very, very dry. Temperature anomaly is on the 23rd of February to the 3rd of March. It's going to be colder than average, especially so for England and Wales. That's a big change on what we've had through February so far. And precipitation anomalies from the 23rd of February to the 3rd of March are drier than normal, very significantly so. The latest wind from that from Earth and no school dot net shows we've got a rather chilly northeasterly wind in the uh, south and the east, although have, we are picking up a slightly milder westerly wind into the northern part of Scotland. Big area of high pressure, of course, but we see there sitting out in the Atlantic to the west of the UK and Ireland. Right, let's start going through the chart day to end. So, let's you can make your run is looking for midnight on uh, Sunday. So, high pressure in control, but we are bringing in 
quite a chilly northeasterly breeze. Into the open over next week, high pressure remains dominant. Grudgy edges northwards, east wind bring quite cold air into southern southeastern parts of the country, maybe a few wintry showers. That's a scenario by the end of UK Metro Rain. Gets us this time next week, next Thursday, 2nd of March. Is that high pressure trying to uh, retrogress towards uh, Greenland and Iceland? I'll let you be the judge. This is how I can uh, look. So once more, with high pressure dominating weather over weekend, but quite a cold northeasterly breeze in the south of the east in particular. The early part of next week, we'll keep that high pressure dominating uh, the weather. Again, is the um, I can model trying to start reaching that high pressure towards Greenland Island? Certainly looks like these areas of low pressure in the Atlantic are uh, struggling to make much progress, doesn't it? So... Yeah, we haven't got a green and high up to that point, up to 2nd of March, but is, uh, is ICOM trending in that direction? And then uh, the GFS Midnight Run, which we know is going to get high pressure towards green and ice. We've already seen it on the Penn State University 500 mm bar high dolly flow chart. Looks like this. For Sunday, again, high pressure to the north, bringing in that chilly northeasterly uh, wind and into the early part of the next week, getting quite cold in the south. With winds in from the east, high pressure uh, further north. Mainly dry, but chilly, I think, through the early part of next week. And then, here we go, round day 8, which is this time next week, uh, Thursday, 2nd of March. That high pressure increasingly showing signs of ridging towards Greenland and Iceland. So, uh, we get up towards day 10. We've got a nice area of high pressure over uh, Greenland. Big trough of low pressure into North Europe along the cold northerly blast. And then... Through uh, just beyond day 10, we start to pull in those very cold northeast winds. These areas of low pressure start getting shunted southwards. They're heading uh, away to our south, and that starts to allow these very cold northeasterly and uh, northerly winds to set in. So by the 8th of March, we're looking genuinely cold in the winter of GFS Midnight Road. Proper blocking around Greenland and Iceland, trough of low pressure covering much of northern, central and western Europe, and very cold air digging in from the north and west. We keep it cold and winchy then up to the 11th of March as far as we get to with the GFS today. Uh, this is GFS 6, so it's looking very late. It's again with the area of high pressure in control of the weather uh, on Sunday. Into about next week, again, we bring in that east northeasterly uh, breeze. So high pressure is to the north, low pressure south. In comes those uh, easterly, northeasterly winds. We head on up towards day 10. The high pressure goes into retrograde, moves up towards Greenland and Iceland, starting to uh, open the door. Those colder northerly winds by day. 10, northern winds blasting down across the country with this trough of low pressure in combination with a blocking air of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland. So down come those very cold northerly winds. That sets us up for a very wintry spell of weather around day 10. And just beyond it, just beyond it, there's the upper air temperature showing very cold air. Mine 10 cells ice firm digging in there from the north. And then the Atlantic has a go. Uh, so you find areas of low pressure being to run into that very cold air. Battleground UK scenario setting up. That's the 8th to the 9th of March. It's a real snowmaker with that area of low pressure engaging with the cold air. And by the 11th of March, another low is <laughs> coming up against that very cold air as well. So, you know, beyond the round and beyond day 10, the GFS 6 said goes very uh, wintry. Have a look at the precipitation type forecast based on that GFS 6 said run. Bear in mind, it's very unlikely to verify, so please keep that in mind, everyone. But we start off with a few wintry showers uh, coming in on those easterly winds during the weekend and through the early part of next week. Not much, but if you, you know, if you say flurries in the air and whatnot, uh, whatnot, and uh, then we go beyond that into the middle part of next week. Again, quite cold, a few wintry flurries here and there. Um, end of next week, we start to get some snow coming into northern parts of Scotland. That becomes increasingly widespread by the weekend of the 4th and the 5th of March. In some snow getting down into the south. The northerly wind will be turning the weather colder and colder up to this point. And then in comes that first area of low pressure from the Atlantic. That tries to uh, dislodge the cold air, but brings snow down into the southern part of the country. And then uh, wait for this. Yeah, a big servant there around the 8th of March across parts of England and Wales. And uh, more snow 
coming in around the 9th of March as well. Um, very, very snowy, Mrs. Look at that. That's, mid, uh, that's nine o'clock in the evening on the 9th of March. Big, big snow event going on there. Imagine if that happens. Well, well, well. <laughs> and then by the 11th of March, look at this. Another major snow event is taking place. That's just for fun, everybody. It almost certainly won't verify. But, um... Very entertaining, very entertaining, yeah, that's it said today. If you enjoyed the video, or enjoyed the video, if you have enjoyed the video, then please do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Another 50 subscribers will get us to 15.6k, so please give us a sub. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, GM, once more, with high pressure out to the north country, winds coming in from a northeasterly direction on Sunday, quite cold, therefore, and then on into next week, again, high pressure over to the north country, winds in from the east, that looks quite chilly, um, up to day 10, now that's interesting, because up to day 10, we've got high pressure blocking, increasingly, around Greenland, low pressure, being a very cold, northerly airstream, into northern parts, of this area of low pressure, could be a trigger low, if that low pressure, when that low pressure runs eastwards, on its backside, that could then start to allow, the wind to come in from the north. We have got a lot of heights around Spain and Portugal, though, but I don't think the GM is all that far, a day or so further on from that. Uh, I don't think the GM is all that far from setting up a northerly blast either. And then the ECF, which we saw with the 500 millibar height on the up, Penn State University, will not be taking this area of high pressure uh, as far north as the GFS. So let's see what it is doing. Uh, ECM looks like this on Monday, high pressure again. Dominating the weather, uh, quite a chilly east northeast wind mode down in the south could bring a few wintry showers through there. And then, as we move up towards days 8, 9, 10, we just find the high pressure sitting around the country uh, with the ECM. It doesn't get that high pressure to Greenland, Iceland, because of these little spoiler loads that we've got up here. So, uh, just anti cyclonic, probably frost and fog, yes, but you know, no hint of a northerly blast with the ECM man. Uh, this would be precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run from Tometshow.com. Again, there could be a few wintry showers coming in from the east over the weekend into the early part of next week, but not a lot. High pressure will be in control of weather, really all the way up to day 10, so very little in way of precipitation to speak of. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. From the Icelandic Met Office, gets us to the 5th of March, 34 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control and the operation run with high pressure right over top of the country, so mostly dry. Chilly, yes, will be frost and fog if the skies are clear, at night and morning, but not particularly cold. And then 17, much more like what the GFS is, for example, is doing, taking that high pressure into the Atlantic, up to Greenland, Iceland, low pressure dropping in to Northern Europe, and that pulls the wind into a genuinely cold north or northeasterly direction. Now, the way this resolves itself, beyond day 10, is that the option very much shifts towards the high pressure pulling out into the Atlantic. So by 6th of March, 51 out of 51 members of the ECM on time on time to take that high pressure, take your above average heights, out into the Atlantic and move them up to Greenland. And so, look what happens as we go in towards the second week of March, that high pressure centres itself around Greenland and uh, Iceland. And uh, the trough of low pressure backs westwards into northern and west Europe. That would get wind into a cold northerly direction. So the ECM on summer's turn things cold just beyond uh, day 10 then. CFS B2 finally, been a good video this, hasn't it? I hope you enjoyed it. CFS B2 finally, these are 500 millipower hydraulic road charts, um, break down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 23rd of February to the 1st of March. The coming week will have high pressure over just slightly to the north of the country, bringing in that chilly northeast winter, especially so down in the south. Week two will be the 2nd to the 8th of March. High pressure is right in over top of the country, so uh, mostly dry and quite chilly with that. Now, week three 
Kiki would see a good line to 15th March. Gets a high pressure to Greenland and Iceland. Trough of low pressure across northern parts of Europe. This will start to pull in colder air from the north and from the northeast. And then we go through to week four. It's the 16th, 22nd of March. High pressure blocking things out around Greenland. And uh, that will be bringing in uh, winds from an east or a northeast direction. Looking quite cold for March with the CFS today. Right, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. I mean, thank you so very much, everybody, uh, for doing that for Gals Well Biz. There may be a video coming up this evening looking at the trial set. Just depends what the trial set is doing, uh, really. So, uh, watch this space about that. It might happen. It might not. Tomorrow, um, no root canal, so everything will be as normal tomorrow. We're going to have the <laughs> senior moment for Gav. Uh, we're going to have the 6 a.m. upload Jeremy Friday, 10 to 14 day, ECMWF, 42 day, slash, six weeks. Look ahead tomorrow evening as well, around 7-ish. And then uh, after 10, we will be live streaming. There will be a Friday night live stream for you uh, tomorrow. Uh, you enjoy the rest of your Thursday afternoon, though. And for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.